Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's your week been? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's get to the word. We have been try <clears throat> going into the matters of the spirit of a spirit that is popularly known as uh, Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel, and <clears throat> we've um, had the opportunity to touch a few things about the spirit of Jezebel. This matter is a simple, it can be a simple message, you just teach it aloud. <coughs> but there is so much to um, go into this spirit um, because Jezebel, now we use the menorah in the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the word of God said, that this is the mystery of the seven churches for the seven ch the seven menorahs candlesticks were the seven churches of god so each of the menorah was a representation of a kind of the church of god we understand from the menorah that there are seven branches and the branch in the middle, this is actually the menorah. This one. This is the vine. These are the branches. This is the sun. From here, we get to the sun. From here, the sun is expressed. So, a man's walk with God is in um excuse me apart from the matter of the 12 dispensational realities a man must explore his spiritual growth in the cycle of his life is in seven when a man gets to the point of number four we understand from the book of genesis chapter one that on the fourth day god said let there be light and so, everything in which was being prepared from the first day till the third would be physically seen on the fourth. It's in the fourth day you can, in fact, it was on the fourth day physicality was um, able to be um, the form of physicality was able to be comprehended because if this whole place is dark you can't see what is being done but when the light shines everything is seen now God has been creating from day one day two, day three and the Bible says and God saw that it was good until the fourth day no, no other being could see because it is this point and at the fourth day, the Bible says, that's the first place he, God, instituted the principle of governance. He said, and let the greater light rule and the lesser light rule. So the place of the expression of authority of dominion began on the fourth day. So the fourth day of a man's life is very, very important and symbolic. Because it's the day in which people will begin to see that you are the son of God. It's on the fourth feast we began to see. In fact, it was on the fourth feast. Jerusalem knew the power of the Holy Ghost. They had been there waiting on the Lord. Until power came from on high. And came upon the disciples. 
Peter, who was timid and was hiding, all of a sudden got up and said, Men and brethren, what audacity. Why? Because he had come to the time where people will see him. But this is the same man who days ago, sorry, weeks ago, he was hiding from uh, a housemaid. Now he's standing in the temple declaring Jesus with audacity. Because it's in the fourth day, people will know the God you serve. People will see all the prayer that you have been praying. Let us see. They will see. This is the time where all your fastings and your waiting on the Lord, men will begin to see that, ah, okay, truly, truly, he said, oh, truly, truly, he has been praying. Really, uh -huh. They will all see it. That's if. <laughs> if you have been doing what you are supposed to do, we will see. Hallelujah. Now, Jezebel, that spirit, will not come in the first day. Waste of her time. Second day, oh, that one, you, you, you already have problems in the second day, so he's not, she's, uh, yeah. the third day, Jezebel is not interested. But when you enter your fourth day, that is why Jezebel loves to be seen. Jezebel loves to take, um, how will I call it? That spirit loves to take um, the spirit loves to be recognized as a part of the reason things worked. So you see, you have been waiting on the Lord. The time has come. Then Jezebel will show up. That is when Jezebel knows how to give advice, counsel, inspiration. First day, second day, third day. Jezebel is nowhere. Because Jezebel is only relevant or only shows itself in places the spirit knows soon will be seen. Because Jezebel loves attention. Jezebel lives for attention. Jezebel if you don't give Jezebel attention, Jezebel would destroy everything. So, if Jezebel is trying to assist you and you are resisting the devil, then Jezebel will let you know that. It's either you agree with me or it does not work at all. Jezebel. Jezebel. And I, I'm taking time to make it as simple so that you identify that spirit. Now, are you aware? <laughs> In the third church, Jesus said, I know your works. Even where Satan's, for, even when Satan's throne is. You know, Jesus did not even say anything about Satan's throne. The fact that where you are is where Satan is. Jesus didn't say for you were not spiritual enough to understand that you are where Satan is. No, he said, I know. You are, in fact, you and Satan, you are tenants. I'm away. In the seven churches, there are two things in which Jesus had a problem with. Three. One, that spirit called Jezebel. Two, the doctrines of Balaam. Three, the Nicolaitans. We will cover the spiritual implications of these three. But of the three, only one did Jesus threaten to kill. He said, and I will kill her children. Ah. To tell you this spirit also wants to give birth. This spirit wants to raise men. This spirit also wants to build a nation. Yeah. This spirit wants to be like God. This spirit is seen in the scripture. In the Old Testament. But we will not go there because it's a Sunday. 
But we call this spirit Jezebel. So we need to give attention to this matter. But before we go into it, I want us to understand something. Okay? God, the God you serve, is simple. Please, God is not complicated. We have made, well, we have not made him complicated. We have built an image that we call God and made that image a complicated being. God is simple. Please understand this first. Because Jezebel would always try to play with your ignorance and try to make it complicated so that you will find another way. Jezebel, that spirit. You see in Genesis chapter 3, God has said something very simple. Don't eat of this thing. The serpent came and said, and the God actually said, we know what he said. But then, that spirit will make God complicated and give you an alternative. God is not complicated. Now let's start from your personal lives. Understand yourself, the God that you serve. Or else Jezebel will come. And Jezebel would manifest in lightnings and thunderings. The Bible says, Elijah, there was lightning, there was thundering, there was earthquake. The Bible says, but God was not in the lightning. God was not in the thundering. God was not in the earthquake. That is the spectacular. The Bible says, for God was in the still, small voice. He is simple. Jezebel wants you to think God will come down from the heaven, brr, lightning will strike and the earth will split. And, and Jezebel would manifest such to you. And the simplicity of your faith will be lost. Because you are looking for spectacular. Are you listening to me? Life eh, with God is simple. Don't let anybody deceive you. You don't need to fast to get God's attention. Don't do that. Why are you fasting? I want God to speak. You don't fast because God, you want God to speak. You ask and he will speak. Your problem is you can't hear. Your fasting will not make, if you are fasting to hear God to, to speak, you won't hear God because God speaks regardless of you fasting. So if you now think it's your fasting, then you don't know the God you serve. Fasting only um, makes your spirit sensitive by silencing the no taking away the noise in the flesh and um, silencing the voice of your body so that you will hear what God has already said. Or you will see clearly. So it is not God that is not saying no. It is you that is not hearing or seeing. For example, There is electric power in this auditorium. Your battery is getting low. You are still using the phone. Then you look and see that the battery is low. You need power to charge. Then you want to pray. Pray for what? You know that's what we do. The light is there. The light is not going anywhere. All God wants you to do is go and plug the thing. Plug the thing. But you see, they made it complicated. That to charge your phone, you need to first go online and understand the dynamics of static electricity and the flow of energy and photons and protons and neurons and how sparks are made and the conductors and the, the, the circuits and the... Brother, plug the thing. 
plug it. Please. This is important. It's important. If God is becoming complicated for you, stop. Stop and sleep. Wake up in the morning. Start again. For God is not complicated. Are you listening to me? Now, let's look at the scripture. This is not the message. It's just something I, I want to share that would help you in understanding and addressing Jezebel. Are you aware that God is not bothered And I'm going to say it. Do you know that what you do with your life does not affect God? Are you aware? Are you aware? Do you know the fact that you drink does not move God? It moves you. The fact that you are a womanizer. Do you know God is not impressed or interested in it? Somebody might not like what I'm saying. But I don't also like what you are believing. Because religion puts you in a place that makes you try to reach something that can never be reached. Don't do that. Abraham. The father of faith had marital problems. Abraham was afraid. Abraham, they asked Abraham, who is this girl? He says, my sister. The father of faith was afraid. He says, my sister. And God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, how did you not have faith? Is that what happened? No. Abraham did wrong. God went to meet the innocent man and said, tonight, you and your entire house, I kill you. Why? He said, you took a, you took a prophet's wife. He said, I didn't know. Do you know in the entire Bible, at no point in time did God address the matter with Abraham? Are you aware? Are you aware that God told Abraham you would have a child from your wife? And what did Abraham do? He had a child with his maid. Do you know God never said, Abraham, how did you? God never said anything. God saw it. God saw Abraham go outside the plan. And what did God say? Nothing. The only thing that happened, it brought problems to Abraham's house. And when Abraham said, you shall have a son and, uh, sorry, God said you shall have a son and Abraham said, yes, Lord, Ishmael, my son. That was when the matter even came in a conversation with God. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about, he said, that one, because of you, I, I will bless him. And I'll make him great. Why? Because it came from you. It was your mistake. But for your sake, that's your mistake. I will bless it. God never at any point rebuke or have a problem with Abraham. Because God is simple. God is simple. A man killed his brother. The God who sees everything saw the man. Now remember, God just spoke to the man, King. He said, King, there's a deep spirit waiting for you. Be careful. King said, Okay. Went and embraced the spirits. Killed his brother. And God came to meet King. Say, King, where is your brother? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? King, you murderer. This day, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That, no. What did God tell a man who just killed his brother? 
He said, what have you done? Now, because this, of this thing, because of your brother's blood on the earth, the earth will no longer produce for you. Hey, they will kill me. He said, don't worry. I will cover you. He just killed his brother. And God's plan was to cover him. God's plan was to cover him. God's plan was to cover him. God is not complicated. You think the thing that you are doing or have done, God is writing it down. That is the spirit of Jezebel. Because for God to condemn you, he has to condemn himself. But Jezebel will tell you, God has an issue with you. The spirit will always remind you of something you said or did two months, three years ago. When you lift up your hand, a thought will come and you remember that thing. And then you begin to ask God for forgiveness for something he doesn't even recognize. But Jezebel is a religious spirit that makes you a slave where you're supposed to work as a son. You think God has a problem with you? No. What you did will affect you. It will not affect God. And if it will affect him, he will come to you and he will ask, Ah, Coco, what did you do? What did you do? Say, I was angry, I was angry. So now that you have done this, say, okay, this is what you should do. God will never condemn himself. Why? Because you bear his name. And for him to condemn you, he has to condemn his name. Please. God is simple. God is simple. One of your problems is that you have not forgiven yourself. You have not forgiven yourself. That is why you keep asking God for forgiveness for what you already asked for forgiveness for. Because you have not yet forgiven yourself. Every time it comes, you ask, oh God, forgive me. Now, do you know what that does? Do you know what that does? Every time it comes to your mind and you ask God to forgive you for something that you've asked him to forgive you before, it's a testament that you don't believe he forgave you in the first place. One, two, you don't even believe that you have his name. So you begin to ask for forgiveness. Over, then you, 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 you think about whatever. And he hits you. Say, God, forgive me. For what? It means you do not believe in the perfect work of the blood. Because if the blood washed you once, you don't need to be washed a second time from that matter. Stop it. That spirit will come. Because the spirit wants you to lean on the spirit. Now when you say, God forgive me, you feel better. You actually feel better. You feel light. Like you feel that God has forgiven you now that you've said it. But you've said this thing seven times. You see, every time you acknowledge that you yield to the spirit of Jezebel. Because now, Jezebel is teaching you. Oh, God. Listen, eh? A lot of preachers who stand at the pulpit, a lot of preachers who will be standing at the pulpit today, their notes are Jezebel. Because Jezebel, oh, dear Jesus, let's go. So, 
I said, God is simple. God is simple. And you must understand the greatest of prophets and men in the Bible were not, they were not like you. They were not like you. They were, they had family problems. They slept with other women. They had children outside. They lied. They stole. They cheated. Yes. Do you know what? Abraham, uh, sorry, Mo Moses was having an affair while he was still married. And the father-in-law was still trying to reconcile them. When the matter came up, God never spoke of the matter. Because it was not a matter to God. It is your matter. Don't condemn whom God does not even know what you are talking about. So this man did this. This woman has done this. This woman is doing this. This girl is doing this. And God is wondering, why are you the accuser of the brethren? Why are you the accuser of the brethren? Why are you accusing the brethren? If God had a problem with you, he is your God. Except he is not your God. He will come to you and say, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? And every time God comes to you to say, what have you done? is because the thing you have done will go against you. Not him or his relationship with you. It will only affect you. He says, you see, this thing that you have done now, this is what it will cost you. The thing was wrong. But God is not holding it against you. The earth is holding it against you. So please, from the basic understand that God is simple. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Calm down. You are thinking too, you are, you are too esoteric. And spirit, you, are, you, are, you have gone so spiritual, you are no longer in the spirit. You are, you are searching for a God who is living inside of you. You are looking for a God who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Meanwhile, you are doing everything so that he would, he would, he would come and be with me. He come and say, ah, I did here. You are the one that has been going up and down. I'm here. God is simple. And make sure that your life with God is as a master. Look at this. God comes to meet Abraham. He has eaten. This is the creator. And then he said, uh -huh. Where your wife? Uh, yeah, we had a conversation the last time. Something about childbearing, right? Uh -huh. So next year, she'll give birth. Sarah was inside listening. And she began to laugh. God who can hear even the ant breathe heard her. I said, why is Sarah laughing? He wasn't talking to Sarah. He was asking Abraham, why is Sarah laughing? <laughs> Sarah had to come out. Say, oh, my, how did you even hear in the first place that I asked the question? He said, oh, I didn't laugh, I didn't laugh. He was looking at, she was looking at God. I, women, fear women. She was looking at God face to face. <laughs> I said, me lie? Let me laugh? I didn't laugh. And God said, this day shall thou be in hell. For all liars will go to hell. And you shall be roasted in the eternal fires of, of, of the pits of the darkness. For thou standest before me to speak iniquity and lies to my face. No. That is what your pastors will tell you. I said, I didn't lie. God looked at Sarah and said, but you laughed. He said, you laughed. He said, I didn't laugh. God said, oh, you know that you laughed. Simple. He said, you laughed. You laughed. And God never asked her to ask for forgiveness. 
Because God did not have a problem with Sarah. He said, you laughed. He said, because of that, you give it to a child. That child called laughter. Isaac means laughter. He said, you laughed. Simple. There was no lightning. There was no thunder. He said, you laughed. There was no master, forgive me for I have sinned. No, no, no. He said, we know, we know you're lying. You laughed. We know you stole the money. We know. We know it. But you did it. You did it. Did you? Yeah, I did. We move on. That's God. Please, serve that God. Don't serve this that they are throwing all over the place. That he's an old man up there with a tribe. Is it Zeus? <laughs> Strike you down. Strike you down. Is it Zeus? <laughs> I want to strike you down. Listen, if you are walking in with God and you begin to find that you are, it's getting complicated, stop. You have left. You know, some nights ago, sometime, I was meditating. Some matter. How we go do this matter? Meditated. You know, when you, you, you are... You meditate and you, you are no longer meditating on the word. You are now meditating on money. You are trying to use the word. Say, my God shall supply all my needs. When you enter the needs part, when you remember the need, that's where it stops. So my God shall supply all my e. You know, as I was meditating, meditating, and I slept off. Look, God is simple. Don't make him complicated. If you think I'm going to talk of Jezebel throughout, no. If you understand certain principles, you will know how to identify certain spirits. God is simple. And I was sleeping. At 1 a.m., I was awakened. So I opened my eyes in the darkness. And then a song was playing in my head. So I was lying down. And then the voice says, sit up. Sing the song to me. Lord, it is 1 a.m. It is 1 a.m. Sing, sing. So I sat down and I went to my phone to try to even find if that song was in my phone. And I realized that the song has been in my phone. The last time I listened to the song was probably 2015 or 2000 song. He said, sing the song. I don't even know, I remember the interpretation. But the song was the answer to my prayer. The song was his answer. The song was the comfort. Listen, God is simple. God is simple. God is simple. Joseph, Mary Gabele, I will go do Relax. It's simple. And I sat down and he said, Sing the song. I don't know the song. And sing it like that. So I had to sit down on my bed and began to sing. Um, mm -hmm. My yeah, yeah.
El Shaddai, Nyami Wai. And he said, Stand up. Yeah, so I stood up from my bed. I sing. One hand. Okay. Jema on shire bre 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 Ma jin jin ina Erade o erade Ma ye ye Two hours later Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing And he said, and that's the answer Please, what does this mean? Oh, Jesus. He has already done it. He has already done it. He said, keep singing. Then he said, the more you sing, it is a confession of your faith. He said, sometimes, it's not prayer. You, you, are too, you are making God too complicated. Come down. Come down. He said, sing. I thought he wanted me to sing the song to him. But it was he using my voice to sing the song to me. God is simple. So sing the song. Yes. So that's what I'm telling you. Sing the song. Sing it. Sing it. And he said, okay, now change, change the song. Change, change the song. He said, okay. So I held my phone and I was crying. So I played this one. So I played yeah, yeah, sing that one too. So there was I, singing a new song unto the Lord. Singing a song unto the Lord. 4 a.m. I realized that the way they go, <laughs> they will ask me to sing it tomorrow. <laughs> I had to round up. Round up. God is simple. God is simple. And that's all he needed to tell me. I've done it. Don't worry. Relax. He didn't need to tell me with an angel. Like Gabriel will appear and say, I am he that standeth in the, in, the, in the side of the altar of God. The Lord said I should tell you. No. He said, sing me a song. Listen. When you walk with God, you realize that God is simple. Most people don't walk with God. They are looking for a God that will solve their problems. And so that is why you are doing, you think he's a man. You say, praise God so that God will be, he will feel good. He say, as, like a man, when you praise a man, you see when you are praising your father, you need money, say, daddy, yo, hey, my father, my super father, papalicious. And say, oh, how much do you need, how much do you need? You think God is your father? God is not a man. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Ha! It is simple. Abraham did not speak in tongues. Abraham did not fast and pray. Uh, did, did Abraham ever fast? I don't read any Bible. But wait. Did Abraham fast? Abraham not did fast. He walked with God. Abraham did not have the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. At no point in time that the Bible says that he was filled with the Holy Ghost. But Abraham could talk to God because God is simple. Don't make anybody make you think that it is an old man in a golden throne with lightning coming from his hands ready to strike you down if you, if you misquote the Bible. God is not your father. Earthly father. Do you understand? Now if you have this understanding, eh, Jezebel would avoid you. Because Jezebel will always make things complicated. Jezebel will tell you. It is because And Jezebel will use scripture. Jezebel will tell you the reason why your life is not moving forward 
is because remember three months ago you didn't pay your tithe. Yeah. God is still looking for that tithe. There's a curse that you need. Now, you would go and pay the tithe. But God does not even know what you are talking about. Because Jezebel will try to use spiritual principles, biblical ordinances to inspire you. Say, why God has not answered your prayer is because. Hallelujah. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are you tired? Can I continue? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Please, nobody should sleep. You see, the experience I gave you, listen, you don't need to do the extraordinary to get God's attention. You just need to just do what God asks you to do. God says sing. You say no, you want to fast seven days and seven nights. No, sing. That's all he needs from you. Because God is him. If he wants the fast, he will tell you. You initiating fast doesn't mean that God is impressed. Say because you want to fa- you want to fast for twenty one days. Why are you fasting for twenty one days? You want to fast for tw- why? Because you watch the message. You read a book. You want to fa- Jesus fasted. For- <laughs> Jesus fasted for forty days and forty nights. The Bible says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. His fasting was as a result of a leading. Your fasting was a result of watching a video. That a man said he did this. You want to do the same and think you will get the same result? Don't be silly. My brothers and sisters. Jezebel would always want to give you what is not your own. You are trying to achieve an anointing that is not yours. You are trying to manifest power because you saw another man manifest power. You are trying to sit and stand in an office that you have not been ordained for. Jezebel would help you get there. So what is your problem? Your problem is that Minister Zina now has the power to heal. Minister Abna has the Gift of prophecy. So you go and fast. Why are you fasting? It's a holy competition. You are. You. You. You, you, you are you, you. What is wrong with you? Listen. This one, I'm being very slow. I'm trying not to preach. It's because this spirit is very smooth, very slick, very subtle, very, 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 very smooth. The spirit can, can speak its way into your heart so you can say the thing before you know it. He's in your life. Very smooth spirit, smooth criminal. So you need to know this thing. It's not Greek now. I'm, 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 I'm not Greek. You need to know. Every one of you here has an anointing and a grace. It has been given when you receive the Holy Ghost. Please, be inspired. But never you desire to be another man. Now, you want to be Benny Hinn. You can't be Benny Hinn. Because God already has Benny Hinn. You want to be Pastor Chris. Sorry, that ship sailed years ago because God already has Pastor Chris. Now, somebody is prophesying. You begin to become the judge whether the prophecy is correct or not to see if she really prophesying or she's guessing because you cannot do it. Jezebel. Somebody is singing in the choir. You are now you you 
you, you have become the judge. Meanwhile, they give you mic. Patrick, should I give you the mic right now? <laughs> they give you mic. You cannot do half of what the person is doing. And your issue with the person is not to make the person better. It's just because you wanted that position or that attention or that recognition that you feel has been given to somebody who is beneath you. I remember when when Kumasi pastor called a young girl. I said this before. Uh, missionary Joanna said, "All right, missionary, prophesy." I have never seen a young lady prophesy like that in my life. She said, you, your name is. That was uh, then uh, Prophet Betchy's beloved. He had invested all his prophetic teachings because he was looking into the future. But the future was hallelujah. So, so, <laughs> so, the, 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 the young man was, had taught her the prophetic skills. Now the girl came. I will call your name. We'll, call, we'll tell you the things you do in secret. Hey, all the brothers. In fact, we never even knew that the girl was in church. I never knew who she was until that day. Hey, what? What? Who, who is this girl? 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 Then I was with some of the elders who were ladies. Say, wow, did you see Joanna's, Joanna's prophetic? Uh, she, it, it looked, she, she looked scared. She, even the delivery, she was like she was even... Uh, and I was wondering, are we, did we see the same person? Do you know not one lady I spoke to eh, actually had the... Was, everybody had an issue. See the way she was. She was, she was not even forceful. She was not forceful. You could see that she, she was making mistakes. Say, How did you know it was a mistake? How did you know? How did you know it was a mistake? You have been in the church since Pastor Obed was under a tree. You have not seen one vision. Someone came. Now you have been you have become the judge. Jezebel is working with you. Now you begin to despise something. You begin to despise something because you are not working in that thing. Then you begin to wonder, this person that just came to church yesterday, all of a sudden, the person is giving me, blah, 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 blah. brother, don't let Jezebel swallow you. Listen, when people start coming to church, you will see professionals, you will see specialists, you will see people who can do, who can do better than you ever thought could be done. When they come, then we will know who is mature and who is Jezebel. What did God ask him? He said, why are you angry? He said, if you had done what you were supposed to do, would you not have been accepted? Hey, I'll kill my brother. If you had done what you were supposed to do. You see, that's the king. If you were doing what you were supposed to do, your brother would not have been accepted because your, the eye of God would have been only on you. You didn't do it. Now, Remember then, when I joined the TV, I was just a deacon. And in one elders and leaders meeting, they called me to speak. I said, I wanted to say, I said, the, the way you people are doing the camera is not professional. It's not, I was just talking, I, I was being honest. I did not know that the founders and the pillars and the, those who started, even before the man of God started the ministry, they had marked me. They did not speak on the matter. I am the one who now saw the matter. Mm -hmm. I didn't know as I was talking. Me and my, my big mouth, I was speaking English. And so you see the camera. The camera, even it was not being professional. The cameraman was supposed to stand there. And Pastor Obey was lo looking at me. Elders and Dick, Dick, Dickens meeting was looking at me, nodding. Everybody was quiet. Was nodding. Okay. Yeah. I said, you see, in, in Christ number C. <laughs> in Christ number C. Well, you see, we, 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 you need to understand excellence. There, there must be a spirit of excellence. So even he, everything we are portraying, we are portraying the man of God to the world and he must be excellent. You see, every, mm. 
The whole place was quiet. I was still talking. You know, I was new. Then when I was done, Pastor Obed said, oh, okay. Okay. I agree with you. From today, you are now the leader and the director of video. I said, huh? No, I meant that Say you say you excellence, the spirit of excellence. Excellence. <laughs> excellence. He said today you are the leader. I was a deacon. This was like my third meeting in the ministry. Excellence. I promise you, all that I was saying, I didn't know anything. So they told me that the next day they have to do a recording in the morning. So I had to sleep in church that night. Morning, I was waking up. Oh yeah, come. Director. I say, okay, it's all right. So where do we sit? I say, okay. You sit here, face here, face here. Let me set the camera. That's the first time in my life I had heard a camera. But I was giving... I said the camera. So I was wondering, so if you put the cassette here, where do you press the button? I was trying to figure, I had to figure what I was saying. Okay, you move there, move there a bit. I was still trying to figure out because God, don't disgrace your boy here. That was how I started. And that is how they began to prepare for the TV station. Because one boy got up and said, no, we can do better. It was not out of wanting attention. It was just, we need to make things better. Even when they gave me, I didn't want. Because I didn't want responsibility. But the responsibility made the ministry move forward. I was not being led by wanting attention or recognition. And I did not have a problem. When somebody came who could add and make this thing better. Because... At the end of the day, it is God that is being glorified. If you can prophesy better than me, why would I waste my time? That's it. Pop the mic. Say the thing. We'll give you fans. Yes. If you can lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Ah, I know that I will have to shout for five minutes before the demon will turn. You just do, And the thing will go. Why would I shout? I'll say do the thing. Then behind the scene, I'll say how far? How far? Get special oil, or is it so? You see, because it is spiritual. Jezebel always gives you the sense of entitlement. When you begin to despise a man for nothing, now you are angry because you were the you are the. Girl that we used to say, hey, hey, you, hey, the way you find me. Now, another fresh girl has come. Brother. Now, for two weeks now, you have not uh, told her that the way she's looking is fine. You are now telling her. Now, another one has taken her crown. Now she has a problem with her. For what reason, Jezebel? Because you feel entitled to an office that is not yours. See, this spirit, don't think it's like a, a, a huge woman in the sky. She is beside you whispering in your ears. Pastor is always talking about Check your heart. Check your heart. The spirit is playing with you. Check your heart. A spirit is playing with you. It is subtle. Check your heart. A spirit is playing with you. Check your heart. A spirit is playing with you. Is there anybody, anything anybody will say? Yes. I've been wanting to say this for a long time. 
Who is fighting with you? Check your heart. The spirit is playing with you. Jezebel. It's like somebody doesn't like where I'm going. Should I stop or should I move? I should stop. <laughs> I'm pressing someone's, someone's number. Hey. Bashaka. <laughs> Listen. Let me tell you something. John said, no man can receive anything except it be given from above. If God gives you, he gives you. If he hasn't given you, relax. It means you have not grown to be able to hold it. Relax. You will get it. Jezebel makes you feel entitled that you begin to do anything to get what you are not qualified for. What are you doing? Jezebel makes you start desiring what you are not ready for. Because the thing you are seeing is desirable and you see yourself there. Sometimes, listen, sometimes you might even feel that you are better than the pastor. She, you, are doing, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Kafui, you know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> One time I was with my father. He said, my son, I am not, the, I am not qualified to be here. I said, ah, pastor, you are the apostle. He said, you don't get it. He says, I wonder why God still uses me because I know myself. I am not fit for this job. I know that I, I am still waiting for God to sack me because I know that I am not qualified for this job. I, I know people in this church better than me who will do this thing better. And, and, and get better results than me. He said, I know. He said, but why am I still here? Because the hand of God came upon me. So he's telling me, I am not entitled in this office. I know I'm not qualified. It is the grace of God that keeps me here. Jezebel makes you feel you are qualified and you have done everything that is needed to be qualified. I have fasted, I have prayed, I have gone to Bible school, I have, I have seen visions and I see dreams. I can prophesy. Then all of a sudden, Jezebel makes you feel you have entered an office that has not been given to you from above. Then you begin to carry yourself in a manner that heaven is wondering. You see, you see, um, you see uh, chicken. When rain is falling and rain has beaten the chicken, how, how they look like when they are running. Uh -huh. That is how you are like in heaven. Say, so what is wrong with this chicken? You're, you're, just, you're just gallivanting all over the place. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus. And, and even Jesus is saying, my God, can someone reduce the volume? Because you are making noise. You are making noise. You have entered something that is not yours. And you are carrying a name that you have not been given. Meanwhile, the ones that they gave name are saying they are not fit. Let me show you something. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to notice something. Listen, this is very key. See, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Purge yourself from the spirits. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, is it there? Okay, beautiful. Watch this. I want you to see this. He said, but we have this treasure in acting vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now watch. He said, there's a treasure. Now, remember, in a verse before, the Bible says, in a great house, there are many vessels. He said, there's a vessel of gold, a vessel of sin. But here, Paul said, we are in acting vessel. The weakest. The one without value. You are not a gold vessel. Or a silver vessel. You are the one that can break at any time. You are the most, the, the cheapest. He said, but that is where the treasure is. He said, the reason why the treasure is in the most base, the most weak, is because at the end of the day, it is God that will get the glory. It is not you. You can't wake up in the morning and say, 
because I fasted, because I prayed, because I this, because I'm that, I did it. It will be no. Me, I am an eaten vessel. If it was not God, I could not have done it. Listen, if you are if you feel you are entitled, God is not there. Because if you can do it, then God will walk away. Abraham had a child. God said you will be a father of many nations. Did Abraham produce results? Yes. Abraham gave birth to Ishmael. Abraham had a child. Genesis. Let me show you what God said. Genesis. Chapter 21. Watch this. You are too entitled. Verse 1. Genesis 21 verse 1. Am I correct? Yes. Genesis chapter 21. Thank you Lord. Aha. Uh-huh. Sorry. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay. Sorry. Genesis 22. Genesis chapter 22. Watch this. Abraham. God said, I'll make you a father of many nations. Blah, 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 blah. Abraham got... Uh, Ishmael, uh, Ishmael. Hagar pregnant. Hagar gave birth. Did Abraham not produce results? He did. Abraham did. Abraham did. Oh, we have this treasure. Abraham did. Look at how God saw the matter. Verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Verse 2. God said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac. Huh? How many sons did Abraham have? Two. What is God saying? He said you only have one. You only have one son. We have this treasure. You see, the problem is you think is the many things that you are doing that God is impressed. No, God is only impressing that one thing he asked you to do that you did. Abraham had Ishmael. Ishmael is now grown up. God did not recognize that child as the son of Abraham before him. He comes to meet Abraham after Isaac is born. He never asks Ishmael to be sacrificed because God did not give you Ishmael. He will ask you if you can give me the thing that I gave you. But you produce Ishmael for yourself. So I don't need Ishmael. It is your own power. Your strength prevailed. And gave birth to Ishmael. But Abraham had to have faith in God to produce Isaac. That is what God wants. God is not interested in your success or your achievement that you made by your power. I fasted and the angel appeared. I pray. No, 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 no. no. You see, God is not moved by that because anybody can do that. God is waiting for you to wait for him and him alone to manifest. And when he manifests, you know that it was not because I fasted. It was not because I prayed. It was not because I did this. It was because God had mercy on me. And he came to meet Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want your son, your only son, Isaac. What? So all the work I did before, God does not see it. Because the Bible says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Jezebel would always want to inspire you to achieve something. God is not in it. God did not mandate. God did not even, God is not, has not seen it. Because his hand was never in it. So there's no God. You see, Jezebel can make you have the biggest ministry in the world and God did not even know that there was even a ministry with that name. Hey, don't try God. Because the excellency must be of him. The excellency of his power. Jezebel will say, 
Do you want the vineyard? Say yes. Do you want members? Your members. Say yes. I can show you how. Rafiki, you understand? Yeah. I can show you how. You see that guy? This was what he did. You see our church, Sarah. Overflow. Now they are having three services. Ah. You see the other one too? I showed him. Now, they have opened two more branches. You see that prophet there? Yeah. I taught him how to prophesy. You see that? Say, I can, I, I, I can make you. Let us do the work of the ministry. Let men know that Jesus is Lord. Let men see that there's life in your, in, in your, in the. And you know all this while God is quietly watching the whole drama. Jezebel will help you achieve success. Men would, would acknowledge that you are successful. But before God, you are nothing. Jezebel. Jezebel can help you. I know some of the things I'm saying will go against me because there are certain things that I had already planned. You see, Jezebel will make you feel entitled that you have gotten to the place where you have a, you need a big church. Who told you? Who told you we have gotten to that place yet? I don't think I should move in that direction anymore because the way I'm going, I, I don't like this conversation. <laughs> I don't like what God is saying right now. So let's move to, you see, Jezebel will make you feel <laughs> entitled you begin to design Nebot's vineyard. You are looking at something that God has not even ordained. Because he's growing. And you begin to despise that which he is working out. And you begin to want that. I remember when we used to go and watch some men of God on YouTube. There's this man in which I respect who said he walked on air. I was inspired. I can walk on air. I can walk on air. I was praying and believing God that anything is possible. Anything is possible. What was the inspiration? Only for me to find out later. Anything is possible. What was the inspiration? Only for me to find out later. That that air walking. <laughs> Was staged. We watched some wonderful prophetic online. This is online matters. Only for us to find out later. Then you begin to despise your your one plus one prophecy. Say, ah, I, I see you have a brother. No, sir, it's a sister. Uh, either way, you have one. Your mother born one after no. Actually, the sister died. <laughs> Your mother born or no born? If I hey, we are at least we got that part right. There was a sibling. <laughs> you begin to despise your one plus one is equal to eleven prophecy. Meanwhile, you go online and you are laying hands on on the your phone. I respire, Father Radhika. So you are now fasting. And you see, the Bible says, uh, looking on to. So what, what, what you look upon, you become. You see, as you behold in a glass mirror, you are changed. To, so now, you are fasting and praying and watching certain prophets prophesy and not knowing that it was a, it was a lying spirit orchestrated and planned prophecy. So you are praying that God give you a lie. Because you don't know yourself. Then you pray, 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 pray. You know they sit up. Why? Because the thing, the spirit and the inspiration you are desiring was not God. God cannot give you. 
what is false. My brothers and sisters, listen. Don't get offended. Don't get carried away. Learn. Jezebel will make you feel you deserve what you don't deserve. Jezebel will make you feel you should go after what is not your own. Jezebel will make you feel that you are, you are, not, you, you, you are worthless if you are not like or you should begin to plan because you have seen. Listen, if God said, I will make you great, he will make you great. If he takes his time, walk with God. Because at the end of the day, you will end beside the still waters. You will, he will restore your soul. He will lead you in the path of righteousness. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and he will anoint your oil. But you must learn to walk with him. Jezebel will say, there is a way. But the way that cement right onto a man, the end thereof is what? Destruction. I have seen, I have seen people leave church, leave church because they felt, even I've seen pastors frustrate gifted believers because they felt the office of ministration of the spirit is solely their own is their property and their right now there is the place of abuse and disorder that one is there but then as a man of god if you feel that nobody should prophesy better than you see better than you Before you came, there were others that God made you better than. Now you feel you are the standard. Then you see men of God, are, all these small boys who are, who are, if you knew the thing, why are you not doing it? My brothers, listen. Jezebel is in the house of God. He works with your heart. Okay, let me round up. The Bible says we have this treasure in a tin vessel. So what is the key? The key is that you must recognize that it is by grace and mercy. The minute you leave grace and mercy, you will follow familiar spirits. You must understand that your achievement in God in this life is by grace and mercy. Listen, give God time to make you. Don't rush. You will fall. You will break. Why? Because it's an tin vessel. You will break. And the potter will put you together again. You will break. The potter will put you together again. You will break. The potter will put you together again. You will break. The potter will put you together again. Are you aware that when you break, the potter will put you together again because he placed something inside of you that he did not put in the golden vessel. And he'll begin to use you. Listen, let God make you because there is something inside of you. And you must learn to see it. Because if you don't see what is inside of you, Jezebel will show you what is inside of another man. And then you begin to desire what is inside of another man and forget that the treasure is in you. You begin to feel less. Forgetting that you are the standard of God because he gave you the Holy Spirit. You are just growing into the place of maturity. You forget. Then you begin to feel yourself because you see someone did something. What if it was fake? What if it was a devil? What if it was Jezebel? Listen, you only know yourself. You only know the kind of spirit that you know when you're lying. You know when you're not lying. You, you can't. Okay, the story that I told you that God said I should wait. What if it was a lie? Then you are there. They say, I mean, when I wake up in the night, it's blues that I'm hearing. I will never find another lover sweeter than you. That's all I'm hearing. That's all I'm hearing. Listen, when you walk with God, know yourself. It is there. You must believe in yourself as, long, as much as God believes in you. If you don't believe in yourself, there's nothing God will do that will work. You must believe in yourself. <laughs> You must believe in yourself. I'm, I'm rounding up, okay? 
in second corinthians chapter 12 oh you can play but lightly please second corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 second corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 am i preaching the bible says second corinthians yeah look at this he said unless i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh it was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me lest i should be exalted above measure next and he said for this thing i besotted the lord thrice that it might depart from me next the bible says and he said unto me my grace is all that you need my grace listen regardless of what you have done regardless of how you have fallen regardless of the mistake god's grace is sufficient regardless of that very bad thing he said listen 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 stop my grace is enough stop beating yourself because my grace is all you need stop 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 there stop it stop feeling sorry for yourself because the grace of god is sufficient to handle the matter he said my grace is sufficient for you jezebel will say it's not enough you need to fast more so that listen don't listen to any devil inspire you with scripture so this thing that you have done eh, you need to really take out time and fast and pray no my grace is enough it's enough because if you do it once you will do it twice then it will become a doctrine of satan the bible says as many who have not received the depths of satan revelations of satan i'm telling you how it comes he said listen forget forget that religious nonsense he said all you need is my grace is enough but what if i fast my grace is enough but i need to my grace is enough but you see it my grace is enough but i don't feel my grace is greater than your feelings on the matter he said my grace is enough for my strength is perfected in your weakness so if you are weak his strength is there to make you strong why because you are an earthen vessel with his treasure he said and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness then paul said eh, most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of christ listen this is a man who knows that i can't do it i will do it not because i feel or i know i believe i can i'll do it because he said his grace will get it done so let us keep doing it where we'll stop we leave the rest for grace because when our strength fail then we know that grace comes in so i'm not going to feel entitled i won't feel down because i did not get what i wanted to get when i get there then i call it okay you see this is where i can get to now where is the grace the grace of the lord jesus christ my strength is i'm weak so i lean on the grace now i know that when i lay hands on the sick it is not because i prayed all night it's because i am an earthen vessel with the with the with the treasure and whenever i come into that place it flows it is not because i pray i fast i study i see visions i see angels no it is because his grace is sufficient so i won't waste my time i would rather spend his grace for his grace is sufficient please don't beat yourself for nothing neither should you let any lying nonsense spirit come to inspire you that you need to you need to you need to i need to do nothing are you jesus no next and he said verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities he said i take pleasure in reproach in necessities in persecution in distress for christ's sake for when i am weak then am I strong? Jezebel will tell you, no. No. Ah, dang. No. 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 You were supposed to fast and break at 3. You broke at 9 a.m. 
Jezebel will say, you have lost it. You have lost it. You have lost it. You needed to. You think God did not know you were weak? You think God did not know? You don't worry. Tomorrow, we'll do it again. Jezebel will say, no. No. You have failed. You have failed God. How can you let your, your canal desire? God knew that this matter, it probably take a month before he can get you to fast your 12. He's aware. But you see, your fasting is not for him. It's for you. And he would help you by grace. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't lean on your own understanding. By strength shall no man prevail. But Jezebel will always ask you to use your strength. Then we begin to preach messages because we want people to manipulate them. Say so today we need to talk about money. Money. Why? Because we need money. We talk about money. Then you begin to add money into your message. Money, 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 money. Thinking is when you remind people about the giving you money, that is when, listen, if they're not going to give, they're not going to give. If you cannot inspire people to have faith in their giving, then don't let Jezebel give you a special revelation and message or prophecy. Say, I see, I see there's a, something that was supposed to happen two weeks ago in your life. There's, there's supposed to be an open door. But the angel of the Lord is showing me your tight record. Man of, uh, woman of God, have you been paying your tithe like you don't know? Woman of God, have you been paying your tithe? Say no, sir. Ah, then those who have not been paying, you can't listen. Stop. If you don't have faith, you don't have faith. There are principles that work in the spirit. If you don't follow the principle, it's your problem. But don't now force or manipulate any man into anything. That is Jezebel's job. God will say, it's okay. What are you doing? Alright, let's do it again. Oh, why did you do this? Okay, let's try it again. Jezebel will say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Paul, Kada, Arada. Do you know, I have a lot of scripture, but Paul, Paul was a very bad speaker. From, we understand from church history, Paul was not good in talking. That's why when he, in, in the book of Acts, the Bible says, what is this blabber saying? That he's, not, he's not a good orator, but he's a good writer. Peter, oh. All ye men and brethren, hear thee, hear he. <laughs> Peter, Peter was a very good orator. But he was not a good writer. So Paul knew his relevance would only be by grace. And we see the grace of God in his life. To the point where even Peter said the things that Paul was preaching is hard. How is it hard? You sat with Jesus. How is it hard? You see, when you think you are entitled to Jesus, you are now Jesus P-R-O. You have lost it. You think you know the standard. Yes, you see, there are certain people who are, who are, who are loose. There are certain people who, 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 are, who, are, who are not working according to the... Are you? Because your, the, the things you do in the dark has not been exposed. You think you are the standard. And God came to Peter. And God said, Peter, eat. Peter said, I will not eat. Neither have I eaten anything unclean from my youth. I am a man of righteousness. I did. Hmm? God said, Peter, I give you food. Me. And you call it unclean. Why? You have become the standard of, 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 of Christology. 
to know what is right and wrong before God. He said, Peter, I'm the one that gave you this food. Me gave you food. I said it. And you say it's unclean. You have done well. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Because you feel entitled. Paul. Paul. He said, I'm a slave for Christ. I don't have my will. If you say eat, I eat. If you say go, I go. I don't say, but in chapter 3, verse, in Habakkuk chapter. <laughs> Remember when my, my father told me, he said, son, the only time the Bible asks you to be a fool is for Christ. Don't let any other man play you the fool again. If it's not Christ, don't let a man play you the fool. Be the fool for Christ. Don't be too entitled that God cannot even use you anymore. Oh God. You become so entitled that even God, you forget that you have this treasure in a vessel that can break at any time. And the preservation of that vessel is grace. You know that God can change you at any time. You know that this is not my office. If God just blink tomorrow, I might be gone. And you know that the reason I'm still here is the mercy of God. Jezebel cannot touch such men. Because those men fear God. And they know that their left and their right and their morning and their evening is by the dictate of God. They know that they cannot go anywhere, neither would they do anything outside the instruction from the God that called them. And the God in whom they believe. And the God that they walk with. Jezebel knows that such people know their weaknesses and I am not afraid to say I am weak. Jezebel knows with such people you cannot use the law to bamboozle them because they will tell you. <laughs> he said in Christ I am hid. Jezebel knows that these people they don't have any reputation. They don't have egos. To, they, they can in public say God okay. They, 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 Jezebel knows. He knows they can't. If you can work on your heart. Work on your heart. God will make you great. Work on your heart. Listen, have peace with all men. Have peace with all men. Even in your weakness. Know that Jesus will not leave you, will not forsake you, will not reject you. He will clean you up and say, keep walking. Any other spirit that says likewise is Jezebel. We have Jezebel in the church. We have Jezebel running the church. We have churches built on the altars and the spirit of Jezebel. Everywhere you go. And such churches, when the truth rise, they will come against you. Because they say, what kind of message is this? Jezebel. Have you been blessed? Put your hands together for Jesus. You know the thing that you are looking for? You have not found it. Do you know why? Because God himself has not found you. You are looking for. God was looking for a king. Saul was looking for a donkey. So I'm looking for my father's donkey. Meanwhile, God was looking for the king of Israel. And until God found Saul, Saul would have been looking for a donkey. In fact, when he met the prophet, he said, don't worry. He said, is it not your donkey? He said, the thing you are looking for is waiting for you in your house. Come. What you are looking, what you are looking for? What you are looking for is not far from you. You will find it when you encounter God. When that relationship and that fellowship is established, what are you looking for? Stop looking for a donkey. Look for the God. That knows where your donkey is. Don't chase shadows. Chase the real thing. Thank you, Father. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Oh, Jesus. Kanemo shake pratalo zayaka. Zane poko segri katula dasha patati. Ne 
Yesu fakale he aziaka la hello sa ale he kozi hata ri la da da he kashanda ma doze karosa kile kata bizo huri skriata fusale la baro la baro la baro la baro la baro la baro za ye kizu fratash Zimna ka helede zisa Aka ho hada he yale jaba Rehetete rato shoko koi Kagabo ze neke dile katu shabada Rado monga soto kuri kapolo zo shepi katode Yeruski hada hi le zamaya Baheo ze baheo ze baheo ze Baheo se rimo jige fati ale kadaya Gado dire tu zombro kozo jongi greke Rite le deje tu debradire Hey, kala di unze kangada da barashaya Abere kadere kadere Etaki kashoto hoya Angazike kobra de kadala Re kanda re ko 